When you think of Idaho, what comes to mind? Not quite. Together. Let's plan your next weekend trip today on Hidden Gems in the Gem State. Welcome to Hidden Gems in the Gem State. So I've lived in Boise for several years now and I've gone on a lot of cool Idaho adventures. But I'm realizing I barely even scratch the surface when it comes to fun things that you can do in the state. So I'm going to take you along on my Idaho bucket list show you some great places you can stay, some fun adventures you can go on, and some local businesses that you can support. So first off on my bucket list was dog sledding because who doesn't want to do that? They're sweet babies. I was so excited when I found out that was even a thing you could do in Idaho, so I didn't waste any time. Headed straight over from Boise all the way to Ashton to see what it's about. Welcome to dog camp. I'm here with Linda Jansen. She's the owner of Silver Stage Mushing. We have a pretty cool day planned, right? What are we doing? We're gonna go out on the six mile trail today. We're gonna take seven dogs and it's gonna be a really good time, but there are some things that I need to show you first. Okay, let's go, let's do it. So excited. Well, the dogs were excited too, which meant they were ready to book it and I needed to be prepared. Help me learn the ropes is my dog sled driver, Landon. Okay, what do you do when it starts leaning? Just lean the other way. If Landon looks young, that's because he is. He's only 14. Future pro dog sled driver. Well, you are a pro already, huh? Maybe. Yeah, I not, think you're pro. not quite. He's as talented as he is modest. If you head down to Silver Stage Mushing, he might be your driver, and he definitely knows his stuff. These are called the runners. Oh wow. They're on the bottom of the sled to help it move. Then this is a cable that goes under the sled and pulls which the dogs are on hooked onto. After learning from Landon and making some new friends. Hi Missy. How are you? Are you gonna take me sledding? I got my feet set, held on for dear life, and went for it. <laughs> So I found out these dogs actually only do one ride a day to make sure they aren't ever overworked. And you can tell they're really giving it their all. I am literally just holding on onto the back of this thing. We are running uphill. I'm so sorry to the dogs for the big lunch that I ate. But we're working on it. We're working on it. I thought I was doing a pretty good job back there. That is, until I met Sam. I am going to run. A sled. Sam is three years old. He's full of a lot of ambition and a lot of sass. So how many dogs are you going to have? These. Maybe. Two I dogs? I not it. I didn't do anything. Are you talking to the sled? No, I'm talking to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> he's pretty cute, but he's yeah. all business when it comes to the trail. Watching him in action, it isn't surprising that his parents are both dog sled drivers here at Silver Stage Mushing. He, he does right now think he should be able to just run a full team oh, by himself. Yeah. He, he'd say hook up 12, let's go. Hook up! His parents are starting him out with the slower, retired dogs. That's the same way his nine-year-old sister learned to sled. It's safe to say Sam's love for mushing runs in the family. Our daughter, who is now nine, I was actually pregnant with her on one of our races. It's, it's perfect to be able to bring the kids in in some level, some aspect. It teaches a lot of responsibility, and it's a, just a great thing that we can all do together. Silver Stage Mushing isn't just for families like the Raymonds, though. It accommodates a wide variety of people. You say you have people from all over the world, but where were the last people that came through here? Well, yesterday I had uh, a lady from Florida and a man from Washington, D.C. Uh, we've had people from Sri Lanka, Guatemala, 
Belgium, uh, the Netherlands, uh, Canada, I'm going to say California. <laughs> <laughs> That puts in with all the other countries, <laughs> yes. <laughs> if you do make your way out here, this doesn't have to be your only stop. Silver Sage Mushing is the perfect day activity to enjoy on a long weekend adventure. I switched seats because I can't work out for that long. <laughs> it, it is a, it's a treat for people because they come to this area to play in the snow. They go snowmobiling, they go skiing, they go snowboarding, and it's, oh, let's go dog sledding. And that's where we come in. All right, ready, hike up, hike up. Linda and her crew are located by not one, but two national parks. They're just about an hour away from Yellowstone, and I was lucky enough to experience that with my fiance. It was just as beautiful as we had hoped it would be. It had amazing hikes and absolutely stunning views. Silver Sage Mushing's also only about an hour and a half away from Grand Teton. That was another beautiful experience filled with equally amazing hikes, scenery, and up close looks at wildlife. Uh, there's some really nice places to stay. They can fly into Idaho Falls or Jackson. Yeah. Nice places to stay and so much to do in this area. Oh yeah. Now I sound like Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're interested in visiting Linda and her extended family, head to silversagemushing.com click book a tour and submit your information. It's that easy. It's just an awesome thing to get to experience that too. You can't get that from a snow machine. You can't get that in any other mode of transportation. I mean, it's just it's just a cool experience to get to get out on though. It's, I think if you respect the dogs, I think you should try it out. Coming up on Hidden Gems in the Gem State, we head to McCall for a relaxing, yet not so relaxing getaway. Find out how you can take a UTV ride through the ski slopes of Tamarack and how much it'll cost you. There's no place quite like Idaho. On this show, we're gonna explore all the fun things you can do here, and today we're headed to one of my personal favorite spots, McCall. It's about a two and a half hour drive from here, and it's anything but boring. You'll get to experience parts of the Boise National Forest, see raging waters, and drive through tons of trees. Once you get there, you'll see that McCall is a town perfect for all seasons. You can do pretty much any water activity you can think of on Payette Lake in the summer. McCall Ski Mountain Brundage has some pretty amazing runs you can tackle during the winter, and there's great hikes you can go on in the spring and in the fall. But no matter what time of year it is, you can always have a good time on one of these. This is one of the many fun toys you can buy at McCall's Mile High Power Sports. And lucky for us, the owners of this family business gave us the green light to check it all out. I'm here with Ethan Templeton. He's a salesperson here at Mile High Sports. He's gonna give us a look inside, show us all the cool things we could check out. Then he's gonna actually take us for a ride. Oh yeah. Sound good? Sounds great, okay, let's, let's go. Let's do it. Uh, we sell anything from snow product to dirt product to electric bicycles now. So we've got side-by-sides and quads and snowmobiles, um, boats, jet skis, you name it, we've got it. To give us a little taste of their products, Ethan was nice enough to take us out in his own UTV that he actually bought from here. It's a Can-Am X3 Turbo RR, so it's 195 okay. horsepower. I was about to say that. Performance machine, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mile High is located off of Highway 55, just south of downtown McCall. And it's a quick drive to Tamarack. That's another beautiful mountain I've actually skied before, but today we're gonna see it without the snow and from a different perspective. I am strapped in. You are ready to go. All right, Ethan. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we started out on this open dirt road for about 20 minutes until we hit the base of the mountain. That's when the roads got smaller, the trees got taller, and we really started to go for it. After about 30 minutes of driving, we got to see a pretty amazing view. Okay, 
Okay, we made it to the top. That was so much fun. Pretty cool. This is Tamarack Summit up here. This is their summit chairlift, and uh, you get a pretty good view of all Donnelly and north, south, east, and west. Oh, it's stunning. What was your favorite part about that? Was that like a pretty stereotypical ride, or were you taking me for a... That's a pretty average ride. That does have a little bit more of a rocky section, so those rocks okay. that we went through are definitely like a cool spot to come and check out and put your rig through the works. I mean, that was so much fun. Yeah, it was a blast. So are we actually going over ski slopes right now? Yeah, so right now this is the Ski Patrol Lodge, and right down that way is like four or five different blue and black diamond runs, and then you've got a couple of different runs off the backside as well. But this is so cool. Just like casually on a ski lift in the summer. It's pretty trippy driving up trails that you can ski down a few months later, but it just added to how much fun the ride was. Something that was not as fun, however, was the amount of dust we encountered. Getting this in your face will definitely do a number on you, but Ethan tells me it was actually a pretty big fluke. And depending on when you take out your UTV, you won't get nearly this dirty. Oh. I just saw myself in the mirror. Wait, I do look like I have a bad spray tan. Told you. Did you, did it, you notice that? I hate it. I thought you were doing the whole dirt interview thing. Go for it. It's cool. Wait, I didn't know that my face actually looks like this. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, this is not okay. Little did I know that on our drive back, the dust would only get worse. Take it from someone who's made this mistake before. If you go for a ride, don't wear suede shoes. Make sure all your clothes are easily washable and maybe don't spend hours on your hair and makeup. Putting my dust facial aside, I can see why people love motorsports. It's such a unique way to experience the outdoors and vehicles like these are street legal in Valley County on any roads with a speed limit of 45 miles per hour or less. So they can act like a second car for you and your family. So, okay, I'd never done anything like this before. I was kind of nervous. <laughs> what would you say to someone who's maybe a little more on the fence about this kind of stuff, mm -hmm. but interested? Yeah, um, all these trails are super well marked. They're on pretty much every map you can download on your phone. Okay. So get a side by side and take a jump and come out here and Go have some fun. It. Yeah. How much is your typical how much is your typical side by side? Um, Jeff? You can get into them as cheap as 15 all the way up to 30. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. So there's you, a pretty big range. That's awesome. You guys also do snowmobiles. Oh, and, yeah. Okay. We do the whole four seasons. All of it. I love it. As much as I'm looking forward to returning to test out some winter vehicles, you can tell from my face during pretty much the entire ride that if you do end up buying one of these, it'll be well worth your while. Coming up on Hidden Gems in the Gem State, we'll take you on a weekend getaway to Redfish Lake and on a beautiful hike through the Sawtooth Wilderness <laughs> that you're gonna need some good shoes for. Idaho is known for its beautiful mountains, rivers, and lakes. And no matter what time of year it is, you'll truly never run out of things to do. Here in Boise, there is an abundance of parks to play at, hikes to go on, and bike trails to explore. Personally, one of my favorite ways to have fun in the sun is on the green belt. With 25 miles of path, you'll be able to enjoy constantly changing scenery. And there are so many fun places to bike, walk, or run to. If you're up for a challenge, you can start at Lucky Peak, enjoy the view, and ride all the way to the other end of the Greenbelt. That'll take you a while, but eventually you'll end up in Eagle, a more quiet but beautiful Idaho town filled with lots of trees and fun restaurants. If you ever catch me around here, I'll probably be on this. Meet my ride or die. This is my bike. It's taken me all over the Greenbelt, very attached to it, but something it can't do for me, unfortunately, is take me through the mountains. So this next adventure we're gonna take, we're gonna take on foot. Today we're headed to the Sawtooth Wilderness for a hike up to Goat Lake. 
It's eight miles with almost 2,000 feet of elevation gain, and it's basically guaranteed to make it so I can't walk tomorrow. But first things first, we have to get to our overnight spot. So we're hopping in the car, buckling up, and ready to enjoy a two hour and 45 minute drive through the mountains. We're spending this weekend at Redfish Lake Lodge. It's a 20 minute drive from our hike and in my opinion, it's one of the most beautiful places you can stay out here. As happy as I was to start my day in such an amazing spot, it didn't take me long to realize I wasn't exactly dressed correctly for today's activities. It looks warm, but it's so cold outside. I'm freezing. Luckily, the lodge has a pretty amazing gift shop to help me solve my problem. And it took me no time at all to find something that I loved. Ooh, official. I think we're ready for the hike now. <laughs> but unfortunately, the new apparel wasn't quite waterproof. I have my cool sweater now, but uh, as you can see, we've run into a small issue. It's like pouring rain. We were not expecting this, but I guess that's what happens when you're in the mountains. We're not gonna let that stop us though. We're gonna power through. The rain showers were pretty sporadic, so luckily I was able to complete my hiking permit without getting sopping wet. Just be sure once it's filled out, you clip it to your backpack where it's easily visible for the duration of your hike. And then you're ready to go. After enjoying some pretty amazing views, we hit our first obstacle. And honestly, I didn't think I had the balance to cross it. This is either gonna be like a cool video or just like footage we show the doctor when I'm at the hospital with a broken leg. <laughs> this is moving! I don't like it. Help. I feel like I'm gonna get like eaten by an alligator and I don't know why. And she stuck the landing! <laughs> If you're wondering who's helping me on this beautiful but difficult hike. This is my cameraman slash fiance. Hi. Just so everybody knows the person who would be rescuing me if I fell into that. Even though I was feeling pretty confident after that jump. I feel like Indiana Jones. <laughs> if Indiana Jones is like a little clumsier. <laughs> I did it though, I'm so proud of myself. Little did I know, getting across the river will actually be one of the easier things I do today. Oh. Oh, be careful. I'm not in the I right shoes. I do not shoes. want to see you fall down this mountain. I don't either. <laughs> so if this part of the hike looks a little sketchy, that's because it is. You just play this at my funeral, like, she died doing what she loved. It's straight sand, and to say I struggled to get my footing would be a massive understatement. I don't know. <laughs> is this a joke? Why is it? I feel like I'm skiing. <laughs> no. <laughs> My back broke my fall, so we're good. I really wish I could tell you that was my only fall of the day. Oh. <laughs> I'm so bad at that. <laughs> I should not be telling people how to climb this. <laughs> but I'd be lying. Look at, I don't even have to, I'm just like surfing. Surfing USA. <laughs> <laughs> Are you struggling as much as I am? Do I have to get up? Have to. Help. I've fallen and I can't get up. Life alert. You're good. Am I? I don't think I need. Am I good? Yeah. I feel like I'm good. 
As much as I want to say it was all worth it, once we got to the bottom, we found out we were actually going the wrong way. So we had to climb all the way back up and we wasted about an hour and a half. That was awful. Do not be like us. We just ran into three other people who said they did the same exact thing we did. Take a look. This looks exactly like a trail. You would never know this isn't correct. It's not well marked. So be on the lookout. That boulder, don't go past it. You're going to go up to the right up here. As breathtakingly beautiful as this hike is, the lack of signs seem to be a theme. Nearly everyone we asked for directions pointed us to a different spot because there isn't one clear path to the top. Our giant detour also put us way behind schedule and led to us becoming pretty isolated. Every time I hear a noise, I think it's a bear and I get really scared. <laughs> it's just other hikers. I'm like, oh my God, we're gonna die. <laughs> Lucky for us, this was the extent of our wildlife hey. encounters. And I was honestly impressed that little pup made it all the way up to Goat Lake because the hike involves a lot of rocks and a lot of climbing. To put it lightly, climbing is not my strong suit. And even though there were times I wanted to turn back, I give up. It's too hard. I'm so glad I didn't. The views just got better and better. And they made it all worth it. We made it. I don't actually know when this is gonna air. I don't know when you guys are gonna see this adventure, but it's September right now, and I'm staring at a bunch of snow. That's pretty crazy to me. Unfortunately, we couldn't stay very long because of the time. Something worth noting if you do this hike, be sure to give yourself a good cushion. Between our detour and filming, the hike ended up taking us nine hours. And this is what the last leg of it looked like. Okay. <laughs> glad we have a light. Not glad we started this hike so late. <laughs> Next time, we are not gonna do this. It's a bad idea. Really bad idea. Do you see anyone else out here? Cause I don't. I saw a few bears. Luckily, we made it back safely and were able to get some much needed beauty sleep so we could enjoy another fantastic day in Redfish. Good morning. <laughs> Rise and shine. I love waking up here. <laughs> There's nothing quite like Redfish Lake Lodge. It's beautiful, rustic, and comes with stunning lake views. And lucky for us, day two in this magical place doesn't involve any physical activity. So we're kicking off our day by renting a boat from the marina. Climb aboard. And heading back to the sawtooths, but from a more comfortable distance this time. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> This was so easy. This is awesome. It had 60 horsepower. It was 70 bucks for the hour. This thing goes pretty fast. And it, I mean, this is stunning. I love this. I don't wanna do this all the time. <laughs> we had so much fun and I felt pretty confident in my boat driving abilities until I tried to park. It's turn. Okay, hit reverse, hit reverse, hit reverse. Oh my gosh. All in all, it was a phenomenal weekend. So we had to end it the right way. Can I get a strawberry vodka lemonade? Thank you. Now it's time to turn the cameras off and enjoy this little slice of paradise. Cheers to a great weekend. We'll see you next time. 
For more Idaho adventures, be sure to follow us on all of your favorite social media platforms at Sophia Dumani TV. Have a great weekend. Next month, <laughs> we'll go duck hunting with one very eager pup and explore some hidden gems of Southern Idaho.